Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome on this actually very beautiful evening as we come to worship and remember Christ's night before his sacrifice. We are doing this as an ecumenical service with our beloved neighbors, the Methodists over there. And uh, I'm glad to see some of you here. And uh, just goes to show that we can get along. <laughs> And so, as part of our preparation for worship, let's listen to Pamela play In the Shadow of the Cross. Join me in the unison call to worship. Together let us say, Jesus said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you should love one another. Let us pray. Lord, I do thank you for this opportunity to worship you and to remember so that we can have grateful hearts and give you praise for what's coming up, both tomorrow, as dark a day as it was, and Easter, as bright a day as it was. And we give you thanks for this in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. If you please remain standing and join me in singing number 327, Here at Thy Table, Lord. for the call of confession let it be in our hearts that we speak out please join me in our prayer of confession eternal God whose covenant was, is never broken we confess that we failed to fulfill your will though you have bound yourself to us we will not bind ourselves to you we do not love you fully or love one another as you command if you have your mercy, forgive and cleanse us. Let us again to your table and unite us to Christ, who is the bread of life and the vine from which it grows. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you and for his sake God forgives you all your sins to those who believe in Christ or Jesus Christ he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit amen Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And thy will be done, Lord. Thy will be done. If you would look into your bulletin and join me in our unison prayer for illumination as we have begun the time of the hearing of the word. I think it already began. Let us pray. God, source of all light, by your word you give light to the soul. Pour out upon us the spirit of wisdom and understanding that, being taught by you in holy scripture, our hearts and minds may be open to know the things that pertain to life and holiness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to have two scripture readings this evening. The first one is from Paul's letter, first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. It can be found on page, starting on page 1784 in your pew Bible if you wish to follow along. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Our second scripture reading tonight comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. And it begins on page 1674 in your pew Bible if you care to follow along. <clears throat> It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. 
After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus re replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. And Jesus answered, A person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that is why he said, Not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is the messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord endures forever. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the blessing of, of the gospel reading tonight and also the, the scripture reading. You know, they go hand in hand, and it's a, just a wondrous thing in understanding that uh, God's word does endure forever. So, Heavenly Father, bless the message of my heart and the sound of my voice be always pleasing in your sight. Amen. Can you imagine sitting at a dinner table knowing that you're going to pass away or be taken and beaten and thrashed and uh, convicted of something that you, were, you weren't even guilty for? But Jesus knew exactly what he was doing. He was struggling through getting all those things done, and especially the washing of the feet. Isn't that amazing how the teacher became the willing student by saying, I am going to wash your feet so that you will be clean. And by saying that, most of the people had open sandals. And the only part they ever really got dirty on them was their feet. And the, for the rest of them, they took their baths and they were always clean. But the difficulty was, you know, their feet. So when Jesus got down and started washing the disciples' feet, you know, they all questioned, oh, why are you doing such a thing? And all Jesus did is like, you will find out later uh, exactly why I do this. You know, Jesus wasn't very clear a lot of times in the purpose and what he wanted to get done. But he did give us a good foundation of those things in our lives that are necessary. Um, and especially when it comes to humbling ourselves to our community of people. Humbling ourselves to those leaders by giving them a chance to lead. You know, so many times in our lives we sit back and we have to question, oh my goodness, am I being led in the right direction or not? But I know that our Heavenly Father, when He touches our hearts and we start to understand that the direction that we're going in our life is the one that He has set forth for us, a ton of miracles happen in our lives. For one, we are so blessed to be able to be free of sin. You know, this is what this whole process is all about in the next few days, is knowing that we are no longer slaves to sin. And that's the kind of journey that we truly want to focus on. 
We want to be able to sit back and enjoy life without having guilt, without having anger, without having hate in our lives, and being blessed by God every day that we wake up. You know, I like to wake up in the morning and say, thank you, God, for the day that you have set before me. But by the time my feet hit the floor, I have to wonder a little bit. You know, what journey does God have for me today? What kind of blessings is he going to bestow upon me today? What kind of challenges am I going to be having today? Oh, my goodness. This morning, uh, it was kind of funny. I woke up. And I was just about ready to roll back over again. I, and I got to thinking, it's like, no, I signed up for this. So I went down to the Red Cross. Um, uh, Merck is what they call it. The um, emergency, uh, um, I don't remember the, the acronym for what they were having us do. But we sat there and we listened to all these scenarios about tornadoes and, and world events that would cause people to have need and so they provide the need for the communities that are affected by tornadoes and earthquakes and, and such and I got to thinking it's like geez God does the same thing for us except it's not an outward type of uh, need it's an inward need that we mostly need ourselves and that need being is, is, you know, refresh our hearts, remind us of the journey that we're on. And most of all, Heavenly Father, look at it as if I'm being like Jesus today. Being able to give forth my love where there is no love. Be able to give hope to those people that have no hope. And be able to encourage those people along the way saying it, it'll be okay you know because even in our hardest and even in our darkest hours in our lives just as Jesus is going through at that particular time with his last supper experiencing darkness in our lives doesn't always mean that we have to stay there it says we have the opportunity to go forth in our lives with the light of Christ alongside of us. And especially, you know, that light of Christ being Jesus Christ and the hopes that he has presented to us and the words. Oh, my goodness. I can't tell you how much it is to see people struggle. But once they start to realize that freedom is there and that they no longer have to fight against the world, they don't have to sit back and argue with people saying, I'm right and you're wrong. What's important is sharing and being able to communicate with people and be able to understand what each and every one of them are trying to explain. Giving hope from the heart always gets that communication done you know the thoughts that we share with one another sometimes doesn't always come forth as a good thing but when we speak from the heart it's always a good thing because we know that the people that are affected the most by the darkness are those people that are holding something in and they're not willing to share until we sit back and ask them, is everything okay? Will you be all right? And a lot of times people don't want anything. They don't want you to know what they're going through. So all we can do is be empathetic, just as Jesus Christ was. Be able to sit back and be able to listen to one another's needs. But where was God at when Jesus was going to the cross? It says in Psalm 22, it says, Oh my goodness, I cried out and you, it was like you weren't there. But we know that he was. Because later in the psalm it says, I trust in you, Lord, for all those things. Even knowing that my refuge is with you. Amen. Amen. We have a plate in the back there for offertory. Every
because it's good if you haven't passed it around. But, and the offering tonight will go to the Ministerial Association to help with us work in the community. But even though we're not passing the plate, we can still take time to think and meditate and remember on both the good that God has done and the good that we can do in His name. of this institution of the Holy Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Eat, all of you, for this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of your risen Lord until he comes. With thanksgiving, let us offer God our grateful praise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise. O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe, you bring forth bread from the earth and create the fruit of the vine. You made us in your image, freed us from the bonds of slavery. You claimed us as your people and made covenant to be our God. You fed us manna in the wilderness 
and brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey. When we forgot you and our faith was weak, you spoke through the prophets, calling us to turn again to your ways. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with the celestial choirs and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. majesty and blessed is Jesus Christ your son our Lord whom you sent to deliver us from the bondage of death and slavery to sin in humility he descends from our height your height to kneel in obedience to his loves to love's commands he who I boundless takes he who I boundless takes on the bondage of our sin he who is free takes our place in death's prison. In the deserts of the wandering, he sustains us, giving us his body as manna for our weariness. The cup of suffering which he drank has become the, for us the cup of our salvation. In his death, he ransomed us from death, or ransomed us for death, domination. In his resurrection, he opened the way to eternal life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, he destroyed life. Rising, he restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. And upon these your gifts of bread and cup. That the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Remember your church, united in the truth of your word and empowered in ministry to the world. Remember the world's nations. By your spirit renew the face of the earth. Let peace and justice prevail. Remember our family and friends. Bless them and watch over them. Be gracious to them and give them peace. Remember the sick and the suffering, the aged and the dying. Encourage them and give them hope. Rejoicing in the communion of the saints, we remember with thanksgiving all your faithful servants and those dear to us whom you have called from this life. We are grateful that for them death is no more, nor is there sorrow, crying, or pain, for the former things have passed away. In union with your church in heaven and on earth, we pray, O oh God, that you will fulfill your eternal purpose in us and in all the world. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in the final victory, and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal life. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, together with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trust, as we forget our debtors, and accept temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of one bread. The bread that we break, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? 
the cup of blessing that we bless. Is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Body of Christ broken for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ broken for you, Jane. The body of Christ broken for you. 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 Shed for you. If you haven't partaken, then friends, let us keep the feast. The bread that we break is... Oh, okay. God of grace, your son, Jesus Christ, left us this holy meal of bread and cup in which we share his body and blood. May we who have celebrated this sign of his great love show in our lives the fruits of his redemption through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, if you'd stand as you're able and join me in singing hymn number 376, Moment by Moment.
charge that it is a tradition with this church that we leave in silence while I'm singing Were You There as a remembering of how the disciples reacted to Jesus' arrest on that night at Gethsemane. Now may you go forth from this place renewed in your spirit by this worship ready to serve the Lord your God even as the disciples weren't with all your heart, your mind, your soul and your strength and share the good news that this isn't the end there's more to the story in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you Crucified, my Lord. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb. Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb?